Okay, you're calling from a 707 area code. Who are you? Where are you calling from? Uh, hi, this is Logan. I'm calling from Sonoma. Hey, Logan. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I called early. Hi. Um, yeah, I called early on in the show just because I. And it's interesting because the the speaker that you had today was kind of right on the money for what I want to talk about. I have a uh, long term friends that have kind of since become Trump supporters. Um, I've known these people since elementary school and uh, they were good friends and have become Trump supporters, especially now that they've started their own business, which is essentially they have a photography business. So now they're entrepreneurs, right? And um, I check in with them from time to time just to kind of see where they're at with their Trump support and the amount of vitriol and anger and rhetoric that you get back when you try to talk to somebody about this. I mean, I just sent an article about, you know, the Cohen stuff and I got back paragraphs about the steel dossier and all bullshit. And By the way, the steel do- the lawsuit, how- I just want to say really quickly, I think I saw the other day that there, there was a lawsuit against steel that was just thrown out. I believe uh, right. somebody could look that up, but anyways, yeah, go ahead. They, yeah, they respond, they freak out when you give and, them information. And, and you know, at this point, now it's, you know, Democrats care more about illegal Im- or, you know, undocumented immigrants than they do about U.S. citizens and Hillary Clinton should be in jail. And it's just that, you know, I, I get about trying to talk to other sides and I try to listen to other podcasts and conservative shows just to kind of get a glimpse. I always listen to this show because I think it's the one of the best ones that's on YouTube or any of the sources and the, the Brooks show as well. But, you know, it's just, there's, it's really hard to communicate with somebody who's not willing to really have a conversation. And there have been times where I've been able to plant seeds by, you know, talking about the things that they care about, right? Like entrepreneurship and having mm-hmm. a con- conversation about, okay, so how do you be an entrepreneur in a world where, there are people that can easily throw $50 million down on an idea and you're somebody who has no money. And I how have, do we look, make yeah, it I, more equitable solution? I, I have just, but this, like, I just have four but, base. Let me just do real quick. And I know Matt wants to get on this. My first thing is kind of a question and maybe you can answer it later, but I, for the purposes of what we deal with on this show, which is mainly politics and the exercise of power in the pursuit of achieving clear goals to benefit most, to benefit people. Right. I I don't, I think most of these people are irrelevant to that project. Like they're going to vote the wrong way. They're going to spew a bunch of nonsense. And a question is, is having the right power, the right strategy and the right approach to keep their harm minimized and defeat them politically. And then, you know, I think that there's the other three things I just touched on really quick are like, look, I think that, yes, I remember, you know, there's certain very cloistered environments where people engage in at times interesting, I think at times pedantic and self-indulgent debates. Um, And occasionally there's some public forums. I would say a guy like Doug Lane, who is my publisher, full disclosure, but zero books. He's a Marxist, but he's, incredibly open to serious and open inquiry and debate with most people across the political spectrum. Um, And those conversations have some value at times. They have a lot of value. Other times I think they're navel gazy, Um, not his show, but just writ large. And then two, uh, most in the practical real world, you're going to run up to what you're running up against, which is like you talk to the, like you're not going to have a normal exchange with somebody like, I got to fact check what's happening on South Africa because there's a a number of people who just don't know and maybe they'll be swayed by propaganda. But people who are like, Nelson Mandela is a communist and now they're going to take the land because they want to kill white people. They're not going to be persuaded by a World Bank statistic or the reality of Ramaphosa's policy. They're crazy and they're bigots and they need to be defeated. And then the last point I'd make just really quickly is I think there is a domain of, you know, interpersonal relationships and engagement, which aren't politics per se, but are really valuable. I think it's better generally if, you know, people talk to each other and engage with each other, but I don't think that 
that might have civic benefits in the sense of like better relationships, you know, and which are worthwhile in and of themselves. Like maybe you have a neighbor and maybe you don't even talk about politics with them. Maybe, you know, they have atrocious politics, but you have some kind of good, you know, relationships established that has innate value, but, and is worthwhile and should be done. I don't think it has much political spillover. Those are my kind of basic thoughts. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense, especially on, yeah, I mean, you just have to win on, on policy and go for a, a broad spectrum approach and not worry about the 35% that are always going to support Trump and right. that are always going to support these kinds of movements. And I, and I totally agree with that. Um, yeah, it's just a, it's a tough situation to be in. And, and so often people are swayed by the most simplistic arguments. Um, you know, the South Africa thing is a perfect example, right? Like if you walk them through step by step what happened, there's a serious logic to handing over land to uh, people that have basically had the land stolen from. There's no other way to bring equality to that country. But the simple thought is to say they're stealing land from people because they're white. Yeah, I mean, but and that's a that's not just a simple thought. There's there's so there's hard. a back end of historical illiteracy and racism built into that thought. And the point right. I'm making but is the, that even the, the people the point I'm making is that even people that you might reach out to at least have to have some recognition already inbuilt that even if they're uncomfortable with that, uh, that even if they're uncomfortable with that, that there is. Um, a broader context to that story. Matt, go ahead. Yeah, I think it's not about the ideas or the arguments with these people, even if they're the, your friends, because the fact is probably most of their friends agree with them about this stuff. And it's way more about material interest in your social circle than it is what articles you can send them. And until that, until either of those things change, I don't think you're going to have much, uh, much hope changing people's minds like that. Because I, I bet... Just guessing, you're one of the few friends that actually does have the politics you do, especially in the group you're talking about. I'm guessing that they no, are So they're like lonely, like the people that they're around like are all liberals, but they're Trump supporters? So like, well, it may have changed now, right? Because they grew up in Sonoma, which is Bay Area, largely Democrats, largely even to a more kind of young people, more to that democratic socialist or socialist kind of leanings. Um, they've moved to Colorado now, so they live in another state. And I don't know. They've been working on the business. I don't know how much social interaction they really have. Well, that's what I'm saying. To be like, honest. And so the emails they're sharing with their business relationships that they've made since high school, I bet those are all MAGA guys. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that's certainly possible. And so, you know, that's that becomes that question and all that. I, I think also, you know, their their family was relatively religious and. You know, they've always been somewhat kind of, you know, had some negative views about women and stuff like that, where it's, you know, it's kind of embarrassing. Right. Um, and so they were primed for this, and they're white, you right. know, and they're, yeah. I don't know, you know, I work restaurants and stuff like that, so I, I worked with undocumented immigrants all the time, and they're my friends, and they're cool people, and I have that understanding, and I don't know that they ever really got that, too. So there's a lot of, like, historical reasons they would get this way. Um, for sure. And, and now that they're working, I think, you know, part of it is they're working harder than they ever have before. And they're feeling the effects of an economic system that does hurt, you know, does hurt people that aren't making a lot of money and gives people that are making a lot of money more benefit, right? Yep. That they have problems affording care and things like that, but they put it on, you know, all the scapegoats rather than looking at a system that's designed to make them fail. Jamie. And um, let Jamie jump in here for a sec, man. I, I have a couple of points and a question. Oh, maybe, uh, maybe the points. Yeah. Okay. We're so I would say, first of all, I think it's good that you're trying to figure out how to talk to them. The other side is not asking themselves the same question. Fuck they're no. not like, Never. how do we reach out to liberals Never. and socialists That's why they're good. and understand and like find some common ground? No, they don't care. They're out winning. And that's fine. Like, <laughs> and that's good. That's admirable. Yeah, that is good. And that is something that I would love to see replicated on the left yes. as well. Oh. Um, also, like, tr also, like Trump's support at this point in time, it's about as irrational as racism. Right. If you are not if you're not of the ruling class, it is it's irrational. And like like racism, which is like 
intimately tied up in Trump support, right? Because at this point in time, if you still support Trump, you're either actively racist or you just don't care about racism, which is bad too. So you're not going to talk someone out of an irrational point of view. But there might be some small sector. I don't know. Like, do you think they could go for a left populist candidate that makes a lot of the same critiques of uh, the establishment, what? but has different solutions and is not yeah. racist? No. Yeah. So uh, there, there are two brothers that I know, and um, one of them was a was a big Sanders supporter before he flipped to Trump. So this is that you know small Democrat demographic. Wow. I mean, he went to Sanders rallies and took pictures of him and was all about it. So yeah, I think a populist message would absolutely work for them. Um, and I, I just to, to kind of go to the point about the, I wish that we cared more about winning than we did about reaching across. Yeah, I mean, I hear a lot. I'm I'm really active in the Democratic Party here. I'm um, part of our you know Democratic Central Committee. It all doesn't matter. Anyway, I hear a lot from older liberals and Democrats that I talk to. You know, the point that. We don't want to be like them. We don't want to, you know, appeal to the hardcore base and things like that. And it's like, why not? Like, they won by doing that. That's how they got. The also, house here's the a real, here's a, here's a basic, also, here's a basic, races. here's our a basic, base is trying to get people here's a basic difference, which is like, our appeal to the base is everybody. <laughs> okay. Like, their base is, do you have a narrow bigotry? Or property. Or property. That's it.